After Spain conquered the Aztec and Inca Empire and uh, tried to colonize other parts of North and South America, they set up a few systems in place to make sure the, the Spanish government could keep control over these colonies. Um, one of those systems was the encomienda system, which was the system of governance Spain set up for its empire. Uh, you can see by the uh, beginning of the 18th century, Spain had uh, divided the New World into the Viceroyalty of New Spain, which is basically the former Aztec Empire in the Caribbean uh, and the northern part of South America, and the Viceroyalty of Peru, which consisted of mostly the Inca Empire and some other outlying parts. And the main interest the Spanish had in controlling these colonies um, was bullion, that is to say raw gold and silver, as well as food, um, cash crops, and other agricultural products. So the way the Spanish um, controlled this territory is through a system called encomienda. Um, this was a system based sort of on the old Spanish feudal system um, and also to some degree on indigenous systems that existed in those empires we talked about like the Incan Mita system. Um, the way it worked was the Spanish crown, uh, that is to say the king, uh, officially owned all the land in the colonies. But he would encourage um, people to settle it and uh, by giving them deeds. Um, this was the encomienda. And that deed matched to a piece of property in the Spanish colonies. Now, the encomendado, uh, the conquistador that would come and take over that piece of property, wouldn't actually get rights to own the property, uh, but instead had rights to the indigenous people that lived on it. And um, the idea was the encomendero would be responsible for um, these natives, um, to teach them Spanish, to convert them to Christianity, to defend them from rival tribes and pirates, teach them um, you know, European styles of life and build infrastructure for them. In return, the indigenous people would be obligated to work for um, the encomendado, um, or encomendero, excuse me, um, grow food for them and other products, mine for them, um, and then, in turn, the encomendero would pay a tax back to the crown. Um, and this system was supposed to last for two generations of, uh, of native people. And after those two generations were up, um, they would be fully integrated at the empire and the encomienda would expire. In theory, this is a good system. Um, the, uh, the encomenderos would be able to, you know, get products um, and labor, free labor from the natives. Um, <clears throat> and in turn, the natives would enjoy the benefits of, of being part of the Spanish Empire. In practice, that really didn't happen. Um, the encomenderos were cruel to the natives. Um, sometimes they were beaten or enslaved, and there are often complaints from the natives to governors um, and also from missionaries uh, into the Americas about the poor treatment of the, the natives um, in, the, in the West Indies or in the Americas. Um, and, this, and, and often the taxes wouldn't get paid, and then after two generations were up, the encomenderos kept those systems anyway um, so they could rule over the, the natives basically as their own fief. Um, so this went on for a while until you saw some serious complaints, mostly stemming from one guy. Uh, his name was Bartolome de las Casas, and he was a missionary to the Americas. Um, he had been to Cuba, um, and then he had worked in um, other parts of, of the New World as a missionary. And he was mostly interested in, um, according to his writing, the welfare of the natives as well as converting them to Christianity. And he saw the, their poor treatment through the encomienda system as... Um, you know, really dangerous not only to the, the lives of the natives, but also he saw to the, the souls of both the Indians uh, or natives and the Spanish. So he wrote a book called A Short Account of the Destruction of the Indies, or the, the History of the Indies. And he had this published, uh, and he got a lot of pushback. Um, he went to Spain to try and convince the king to end this encomienda system. But keep in mind, a lot of people were making a lot of money off of this system. Um, no less than the king. Um, so there was this, uh, a lot of pushback um, from people in Spain. 
and even from other missionaries um, who sometimes saw the uh, the span or the natives as uh, sort of not able to be fully converted. Uh, there was a saying in the Spanish Empire, "Sin indios uh, no las indias," which means without the Indians there are no Indies, um, which basically means that the labor the natives provided through the encomienda was the most important part of uh, Spain's colonies in the New World. That without the the labor, there was no way to access the raw materials of the Americas. Um, ultimately, King Charles was sympathetic to um, de las Casas's con, um, writings, and he wrote a new a set of laws in 1542 called the New Laws that abolished the encomienda system. Um, some of the encomenderos uh, revolted against this, but ultimately they uh, their resistance was put down. A new system was put in this place called repartimento. It wasn't that different from encomienda. Uh, instead of individual deeds um, given to the encomenderos, um, governors were responsible for organizing the labor and the uh, the produce. Uh, eventually, this system also sort of died away, and in its place, you saw this hacienda system. Um, hacienda is basically a, a Spanish plantation um, where you had uh, a landowner, um, typically a Spaniard, would have a large tract of territory and uh, would pay or use slave labor for uh, growing crops uh, or for mining um, material out of the earth. Um, and sometimes de las Casas gets uh, his, his assessment by historians is kind of negative. Um, for one, you can kind of draw a, a direct connection from the rise of the hacienda to the, the rise of um, slavery and the, slave, the African slave trade. Um, as natives started to die out and as they moved away from the encomienda, um, a lot of these Spanish settlers didn't want to pay workers and so they started to rely more on African slave trade. Um, also, some people say that de las Casas kind of exaggerated the treatment of the natives, that it wasn't quite as bad as he said, and uh, other people in Europe who didn't like Spain too much, uh, like England, for example, um, used de las Casas' writings to demonize the Spanish, when really a lot of the treatment that the Spanish gave the natives, other Europeans did as well. Um, but this was the way the, that, that Spain governed.